of you who know me, that's going to be weird. But uh, Chris is actually doing uh, most of our presentation. I'm just going to uh, lead in with a, a few words about why we're doing IT reviews. Um, we've been in uh, a, a bit of a, a switch from thinking of ourselves as technology providers and really focusing a lot more on being what we're calling knowledge solution uh, leaders and enablers on our campus. So it's a um, probably not an uncommon shift for all of you in your campuses as well as we start to really think about how we can help our universities achieve their grand missions um, and recognizing that technology is changing a lot and our clients are looking for different things from us. Um, Chris is our senior business analyst. Um, I spoke last year at Can Height about business analysis in higher education and, um, and he is the product of uh, some good thinking on our campus that my predecessor had uh, along with Mike Ridley, um, Bowen and Mike kind of came up with this idea a few years back and I'm happy to say that I was able to put it into action. Uh, we hired Chris, he's been with us just about a year. And uh, through having our business analyst practice in full swing, we've been able to implement something we are calling IT reviews um, in order to assist our clients in better understanding their own environments and how they're delivering IT. So um, one thing has allowed us to accomplish another, which is pretty, uh, pretty exciting for sure. So I'm gonna hand this over to Chris. I'm gonna jump in only as necessary. Uh, he's going to give you a great outline on how we're actually implementing our IT review process. And uh, of course, we'd be happy to answer questions at the end. And without further ado, I'm going to pass this along to Chris. So feeling that it's too early on a Monday morning, let's flip this presentation a little bit and to start with asking you a question. So with a show of hands, who has experienced a situation with a consultant coming on campus doing an IT review. It could be accessibility review, so IT accessibility. It could be a review of your IT systems, a gap between where you are, where you want to be. Any kind of consultant coming on campus and doing like one-off projects. So as I was expecting, there would be quite a few of these situations where they've come to your university. And have you thought to yourself, hold on a second, why can't my team do this? Like, why can't I or my group do what these consultants are doing? So what we're talking about is how can you or your IT group create a service at your school which provides some of what these consultants do. The topic or a title of our presentation is using an IT review process to open doors to campus partnerships. I'm happy to be here today to talk with about what we've done at the University of Guelph, what you can do to implement this at your own school, and to share the IT review methodology and some of the tools. So let me start by outlining what's part of this presentation. I'm gonna talk about the background of our IT review, how it's come about, the type of projects that have been tackled. Then I'll talk about a background on the strength of being a centralized IT team providing this service. Then I'll do an outline of how we use this during an actual implementation, some of the tools that we used for this. And finally, what did we learn? How can you apply this to your IT environment? As Gaylene hinted to in the introduction, some of the background of our IT review process, it starts with having implemented the BA practice at the University of Guelph. So this was implemented over the past couple of years, believing that the business analyst would bring some rigor to the project. Going right from the identification of the project needs, elicitation with the stakeholders, delivery of requirements, and actual stick handling of the project through to completion with the stakeholders. So the foundation being the business analyst practice, uh, this team allowed us to, in a methodical way, start delivering projects. This led us to some findings that the next logical step, being a distributed campus that the University of Guelph is in terms of IT, was that there was some commonalities being seen. Some areas of campus were implementing systems that other areas would be benefiting from. We wanted to bring some centralization, if possible, and reuse some of what was already done. 
So at that point, there were some consultants doing one-off projects. There was a recognition that if a service could be provided, such as an IT review, there could be some benefits derived from reusability of these IT reviews. There could be some benefits from what was done in some areas being brought to other areas and for the central IT team to be providing this as a service. Let's not duplicate what we already have in other areas of the campus. As I mentioned about business analysts, we're trying to understand at the University of Guelph that IT is working towards alignment and that the identification of needs are being done by the BAs and trying to learn with what is being done in other areas of campus and what is being done externally and how it can be reused. So we don't treat our IT reviews as distinct projects. We try to use this service as a way of introducing uh, other parts that we've done for other reviews and bringing these forward for reuse. Each IT review we've gone through has allowed us to build on previous ones and extend our services. The second part of what I want to talk about here is what types of projects have we tackled? So some, some of the IT reviews we've done have been a review of an IT delivery model within a whole college or faculty. So taking a whole college, trying to understand what they're doing, who's doing it, what are their real needs, how can we change this, and, and what can be the outcome, or what can be a change that drives to what they need. We've also done a detailed review of processes, staffing, auditing of systems, uh, gap analysis between where a system is now and where it is in the future. A third type of review we've done is to review one particular process within a larger unit. So this was a non-academic unit and was a document workflow. How can this unit uh, change their document workflow? And that was uh, one of the topics for an IT review. So as I'm mentioning, there's both academic and non-academic units that we've done IT reviews against. The majority of these groups have come forward to us. So once we sort of got the ball rolling with one IT review and the word got out, then other areas started recognizing some of the benefits or you know, through the grapevine heard about what we're providing. So that's sort of how uh, these things have got going. And this has led to campus partnerships, which is something we'll talk about at the end where uh, someone has been hired between two departments, between the central IT team and 50% uh, for a particular unit on campus. So really what our belief is, is that the IT review process brings the CCS, the central IT team, uh, BA skills and processes. So our skill set combined with the needs. So the, the driver for these needs is the unit who's asking us to be involved in this. It's not the central team coming out and dictating, here's what this, process, this review process is going to achieve. It's the unit coming to us and saying, here's what we need help with. Here's the scope of what uh, this IT review should be about. So that's an important distinction that we're not forcing centralization on these teams through the IT reviews. It's them requesting from us. The second point I want to talk about is the strengths that we've recognized from being a centralized team versus having one-off IT consultants coming onto campus. So some of the uh, advantages that we've seen is that those coming from external groups, or external companies, may not understand the higher ed environment or challenges that are particular to our school. Another advantage is that we know the services and hardware that are available and are being developed internally, and our knowledge may be stronger than some of these external groups. On top of that, we may have implemented many of these systems. So we already know what exists on our campus. And finally, some external consultants may need to learn the nuances, the politics of our environment. And we believe as a centralized IT team, we may have a lot of this knowledge internal. So that's some of the strengths of why we would be doing this versus hiring an external team. Now the BAs themselves are acting as an advisor. So that's one of the strengths that we sell to the clients is that 
we have the skills of elicitation and previous experience on campus. And we understand the overall vision of what's being done from an IT perspective on campus and across projects. I'd like to cover some of what we've done during an actual project and discuss some of the tools that we've used as part of this. And uh, I'm happy to talk with anyone at the end and share a package of the tools that we have and uh, examples of our IT review uh, documents and the final outcome kind of documentation that we've produced. Some of my recommendations though are that uh, you want to start with why are we doing this project? And so these first recommendations are going to be related to the uh, project charter or what we call the project brief which outlines the foundation for why this project's happening. So the, as part of this, driving and driving the IT needs from the business needs should be your focus. Start with the vision and work backwards to what needs to happen in order to build up that vision. And this sets your, your tone for your project. Uh, importantly with that is the scope, what you'll be providing, but also what you're not gonna be providing. So right up front, Normally we say, this is what's part of this review, and this is areas that are out of scope. So out of scope could be you know, going through the full RFP process, or uh, helping you implement this, or that sort of thing. And finally, having a clear project vision, as I was mentioning with the scope and the documentation, is pretty important because then uh, you can all get on the same page. You start with the client knowing what they're getting and what the timelines are. That way, as you have kind of intermediate meetings and you show them the interim uh, decisions and discussion, they can come back to the vision and you can know whether you're, you're going off uh, scope for this project or not. So I'd like to talk about uh, what we've done during an actual project, some of the steps. So we've started many times with a kickoff meeting with the sponsor or the main requester to understand their goals along with discussing the constraints and any desired outcomes that they have. Some of our projects have been a gap analysis between where this unit is now and where it wants to end up. So this kickoff meeting will be their chance to tell us some of where they want to end up or for us to talk of some other examples of uh, where they could end up. Secondly, we may provide uh, coaching or sample text for communication. So this point is because uh, the unit is going to have to communicate to their employees within that unit and they're going to have to uh, both explain to them what the IT review is and maybe talk to their fears. So inside that unit there could be IT people who see the central IT team as a threat or there could be people who see what does this IT review mean? Is this a uh, a change to my job description? Is this a change to what's happening on my day-to-day -day basis? So this is a chance for us to come with some text to that unit and say, here's what's been done in the past. Here's how you can communicate to your team and um, help with some of their potential fears. Then we start to schedule and coordinate interviews with their IT staff being the first to be discussed during the so we have both individual and group interviews. Depends on the unit, how they have it set up. Uh, we've had success with both methods. Carrying on, we normally document and aggregate what we found so far for these results. So this is sort of an interim checkup. Uh, we go back to the sponsor. And we say, here's what we're hearing so far. We may need to have a second round of interviews to explore a whole different uh, area that's come up as in the middle of the project, or we may be right on, on path with what they're looking for. So as part of this, we, we discuss what we're finding and where we think this direction is headed. Then we complete our interviews and do any internal research that we need, or perhaps we need to go external and find some solution that's uh, out in the marketplace. This is where we have a chance to discuss internally within uh, with our managers and discuss, here's what we're thinking of recommending. Is this going to work? Is this in line with what 
the IT direction is for campus. Then we go through a process of writing, uh, explaining our results, building our, our background information, strengthening our case, and figuring out what are we actually going to present to our recipients. What do they want to hear? Uh, and how we're going to tell them about this. There could be some potential next steps for our internal group. So we may stick handle, do the project coordination amongst various IT teams on campus, because we may be presenting the results and telling them here's the next steps we would suggest. In the end, it's that unit's decision on how they want to proceed with the recommendations we've given them, but they may uh, want us to have already done the first steps of coordinating internally. Uh, as I say, stick handling what's going to be what's going to be happening. So this is some of the steps, and as I mentioned, I'm happy to share some of the documentation, which would be project brief, project charter, and uh, documents we used for interviews, and uh, how we went through. Uh, the results and the steps for this sort of thing. The next section I wanted to discuss was what do we learn and how could you apply this in your IT team? And one of the things we learned through the first couple of presentations uh, was that the time commitment for interviews was quite significant. At the beginning we estimated that we're going to meet with people for 30 minutes each and this will progress over one week, that sort of thing. But uh, the, the learning was that with people's schedules and with the way that the interviews progressed, it became a lot more time consuming to do that. Uh, another thing we learned was that having many points of view was ad advantageous. So there were several situations where we had to have second rounds of interviews or bring in other people from campus who may have experience or background on how the system was implemented. So staying flexible with your questions and the direction that they will head in, really trying to understand what their problems are and the layers of their problems, and trying to get into what their business processes are. So having many areas of campus engaged in our IT review process was also very important, so that we could go to the IT security office, talk to them, ask them what do they suggest for our findings, being able to go within our IT team and, and find out what do you think about this idea or tossing idea? So those, those kind of people internally was very helpful. And having the ability to communicate that we're not doing this to centralize your IT services was something important for our campus. That's just one of the particularities of our school. And uh, we wanted to stay as a distributed model. So not forcing our ideas on our clients was an important consideration. Um, in terms of the collaborative environment, that's where, as I mentioned, we've had some opportunities as a result of these reviews to make a connection with the department and to fund a position for a person but half between one area and half between another. So, um, Galen, do you want to speak a little bit about collaborative partnerships? Thanks. So I think Chris has pointed out that um, a lot of this is about dialogue and um, for us one of the key components of this is being able to go in and have some discussions um, on a high level about what our IT uh, review process could be for um, various units on campus. Um, specifically I think Chris is talking about um, one, of the, one of the relationships that we have which is with our Office of Research. Um, when we brought Chris on board as a BA it's actually a, a shared hire. We um, engaged our office of research with the idea that having a business analyst specifically focused on some of their needs was really important. Um, so 50% of Chris's time is actually dedicated to our office of research. So he's working with them on very specific projects for their needs. Um, and they're not small projects. Uh, the biggest one is that we need a new research administrative information management system. So. Um, 
he came on a year ago and we're still working on, um, uh, there's a business case that's sort of turning around in the process of, uh, um, it's a little bit complicated on our campus. We have a number of um, financial discussions that are taking place. So in terms of funding, not sure that that's going to happen yet, but then the RFP process, which has actually started and Chris again is involved with that. So his focus in that area um, is really around their needs. And we didn't, Chris actually wasn't involved with an IT review with the Office of Research. However, as we were piloting the idea of a business analyst, we actually brought in uh, a business analyst for us who, um, her name was Nancy Premier, and she developed our uh, business analyst um, pardon me, methodology and framework. And so she actually undertook essentially an IT review with the Office of Research as part of that process and did a, a full um, current state to future state and gap analysis and helped them identify some of the priorities they needed to focus on. Um, the the RAMS was not a surprise. I think they already knew that was a priority for them. But there were some other discussions about how they could be doing some of their other IT things differently. Um, so the collaborative component outside of the Office of Research is really about building relationships. And uh, Chris talked about some of those, I'm going to put quotations, bunny ears around the consultants, because one of those consultants is in this room right now, and that's Rick Bunt, um, who we actually brought on campus uh, two years ago to help us with an IT review within our Ontario Veterinary College. And so that was an example, and that wasn't the first time. There had been a couple of individuals, Jim Cranston is another person who came to campus and worked with our athletics department a few years back. So We've brought CIOs on campus as those bunny ears, again, consultants, who've helped us do these IT reviews in past. But again, because we now had a business analyst who we could uh, align with our various departments, we felt that that was something that we could start undertaking. So some of the processes that we've done are really an extension of some of the things that Rick and or Jim or somebody else would have done. Um, what we've tried to do is labor uh, or add on a, a few additional components really based on the fact that we do know our environment. So understanding for them where the direction of IT is going. Um, so when we have those discussions, we really do talk about that issue of the centralized and distributed model. Um, we believe very much that we provide a lot of services on campus centrally that our various departments could be making better use of. So those certainly come out in IT reviews and we try to guide them to which services uh, and really in a timeline way when Chris presents the re report back there are recommendations and they have near dates and far dates. You know these are things you could do as easy and quick wins. These are things that would actually be um, a little bit more work or need a little bit more planning, but there's something that you could think about in the next year to two years in order to help guide you towards a more efficient delivery of IT in your environment. Um, we touch on systems, we touch on so systems that we provide. We do talk about staffing as well. Um, and again, the idea not so much that we think that we should be absorbing all of their staff and, and directing all of the IT, um, some people are interested in picking up on services like our managed desktop service, which are frontline, um, really just it is managed desktop. So it takes that baseline, more commodity type IT service off the table so that their IT staff are able to focus on things that have a little bit more value to that distributed area. And that really is one of the key uh, discussions that we have with them. We're not trying to completely wipe IT out of your area and pull it off into ours. You have very specific things we don't do, and I don't think we're going to get around to doing them anytime in the near future. So we don't want to remove that. We want those individuals to have more time to focus on those things that have more value in those distributed areas. So that collaboration piece is really about trying to exchange information and, and truly understand what our perspective is when we're coming in. And again, as Chris pointed out, really understanding what their goals are. Um, we say right up front, my last discussion was with the dean in one of our colleges. They haven't moved forward with an IT review, but he really wanted to understand what it was all about. And they're looking at, you know, in, in a lot of our um, colleges, you may call them faculties, we call them colleges. They have a variety of IT people who are there. They don't actually, from a dean perspective, doesn't actually even know what they all do. So there's a whole issue just around if it's not centralizing IT staff on campus, maybe centralizing the IT staff in your own area so you have a better understanding of what those folks are doing and you can make better use of their time, be more efficient with what um, they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis, backing each other up. You have some people who are 
happily and very well servicing particular departments within a college. Um, but then there's other areas in the college that have absolutely no IT support at all. So it, it really is about changing their perspective and, and talking about things from, um, uh, I think, through experience that we have on campus. And we can provide them with examples of how some of these things are being done very well in other areas of campus. So not from the central IT perspective, but from those other colleges. And I think that that's been really helpful as well. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Kaylee. So that we were trying to talk about is how we've done the collaborative environment and what's come out of that. And we're hoping that there's more of this as we do more IT reviews. So really, uh, this brings us to the end of what we were trying to accomplish. Uh, what I've tried to cover is the background of how our IT review process worked, uh, the strength of being a centralized team versus what our uh, external offerings can provide, Outline of how we use this during an actual project and breakdown of some of the pieces during that project. And how you could apply this in your IT environment, which is some of what Gaylene was talking about. So as I mentioned, I'm very happy to share uh, more in-depth experiences and the actual documentation. Uh, if people are, are interested in, in learning about this. And uh, if there are any questions, uh, now is a good time. Or if there's any online questions, I'd be happy to take them. Uh, well, besides having a fantastic uh, can you describe a bit how that team's made up and the reporting structure of our team? Oh yeah, there's not much. Uh, so I report directly to like the associate director of IT. So uh, there, the team, the team is hopefully going to get larger, but uh, that's really the the strength of the, our team at the moment. Like. So I'm both doing business analyst and then sometimes doing project management as needed. But uh, the goal is to have, you can maybe talk about this. But. Sure. Um, ah. Sorry. Um, Chris does report to me right now. We're actually about to go through some changes. So he um, may be reporting to a, a different individual um, in the next little while. We are very hopeful to continue to grow. We actually had on the books for two senior business analysts. Um, and due to some changes with one of our partner uh, departments, they determined that they realized they didn't actually need a business analyst right now. They needed something quite different. So that conversation, will, I think, will circle back around with that group. That's our athletics department. There are other areas where we're recognizing a real need for this. Um, however, what we're also recognizing, is, and there's a component of this in these IT reviews, is the, the aspect of uh, relationship management and the real need to develop more uh, skills and services around relationship management. We have a lot of people coming to us looking for help with projects. Um, so it could be a project manager, but it's also about going out and really understanding better what the project is. So we're looking for um, really a, a triple personality in, in one body in some ways, that project management BA and uh, also the, re the uh, relationship management piece. And in pure BA, of course, your BA should be a BA and they shouldn't be having to uh, focus too much on project management. But uh, we are also building up BA skills within other members of our CCS team. Uh, web solutions, which is our development area, is definitely schooling up in that area. We have a couple of people there we call business solutions specialists, and they focus on doing um, elicitation and requirements analysis for development projects. And that really is what their focus is, is BA. We've just put a different title on it in those areas, and that's due to some uh, interesting HR discussions that we have. Um, and so I think that we're going to see more positions coming. But yes, currently, Chris reports to me. And, and part of the intent with that is just because this is about collaborative discussions and partnerships. It really falls in my area at this moment to shepherd this in. So I think we're at a point now where we've got something moving forward. I don't think it needs quite as much um, help from myself at this point anyway. Um, so you've kind of got two masters in this process on one hand obligation to respect the overall uh, direction of the central IT campus. And on the other hand, you're working with a range of clients that might kind of want to go off on three directions. How do you, uh, how do you manage that tension? Do you have an example? I think we, yeah, okay. 
I think uh, from a BA perspective, uh, I try to be as most objective as possible. So one of my strengths, I guess, is because I haven't been around to know, you know how all these things developed. Uh, I, for a couple of the IT reviews, I can come in and say like, well, this is what I know from like industry or why, why are you doing it this way? Um, so then I haven't had a lot of pushback from the central group. If I made those kind of recommendations, but in terms of, um, yeah, there, there is challenges in terms of if the central group is going one way, but from this IT review, I don't feel that this area really needs it. I think um, we try to communicate that in, in the reports. Like with the, we did a workflow project for the president's office and there is a direction to go in for the whole campus to one product. I, I didn't strongly feel that the president's office needs to jump in that, that direction at this moment. I thought that there were more like piecemeal needs. Um, so I don't know if we've, how we've actually really managed that. We've, um, I guess, just shown the, the, the different options and, and discussed around that. Um, I think it's, yeah, I think part of the approach we take mm -hmm. is we truly are trying to pro provide recommendations and put some context around those recommendations. So what makes sense? This is what's happening on campus. Uh, this will um, bear fruit for you in terms of gaining efficiency, potentially some, some budget value as well. Uh, in the case of, so the example that Chris used around that particular system, you know, we do know it's, we're a large campus, people have specific needs. There's lots of projects that are happening without our involvement. Our goal is through this process, not just through this process, but through others that we're going to have better discussions about why it might make sense to choose a product that's already on campus versus going external to something completely different. If people have done their due diligence, they've done a detailed requirements analysis and, and they still come up with a decision that they really need a different system, the way our campus is constructed, they have a budget whereby they can do that. Um, the discussion isn't just happening through central IT, however, there's a growing awareness and understanding from senior administration that we have to think really differently about how we're delivering IT on our campuses because there is duplication, there are costs, and there is a real need to try and look at it from a much more holistic perspective. So we actually aren't getting a lot of pushback because I think people understand the, the value and the, the common sense um, message we're delivering. Again, they can still go off and, and make their own decisions. That's fine. The challenge is any new system coming onto campus at some point is going to have to integrate with the other systems that are on campus that we are delivering. So the bigger goal for us really is just please tell us before you actually are coming to our door and saying, I need this next week. Um, you know, that's something that we've always dealt with in central IT. Uh, we probably will deal with it ongoing. We're hoping that that time lapse or those discussions have much longer legs uh, so that we can be a lot more um, helpful in how they do come on board if they indeed do choose to go to these other systems. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think it's interesting because, I mean, this ties to strategic planning as well. We're looking for more ways we can engage with our our client base across the campus with the strategic planning. So we go through our own strategic strategic planning processes. We really don't always have that picture on where the other departments on campus are going. So this again can build those discussions so that we can have touch points um, as we move away from this to say, hey, let's check in on a more regular basis with what you're moving towards. You know, we're delivering you with recommendations, but they're based on goals that you already had in place. So if you already had an idea that you were going to be um, you know, putting in a new research administrative information management system. Um, let's keep discussions. How's that going? Where's your progress? What's the timelines on that so that we can ensure that we're being prepared and ready to ourselves for those things as they come up? Rob? In your interview talk, you mentioned you talked with a key stakeholder and talked to that team. Do you talk to any of these undergrads, graduate schools, uh, faculty? I guess it depends on the, the context. Like when we went to the college or department level, we definitely talked to the academic staff. Um, I don't think we got to student level just because what the context was. Uh, it was more geared towards our computer systems that are being used for administrative purposes. So if necessary, it definitely would have, if it, the context was uh, student facing or even technology for classrooms, we would have had to gone to that level. But um, so far, we haven't had that kind of project. Um, 
Uh, yeah, part of that really is about the, again, it's recommendations. Um, we try not to say you should, you know, you must do this. Um, there are areas on campus that are delivering managed desktop support, um, and they're quite happy with their support. There's definitely still a pushback from faculty areas. So while um, administrative areas within the colleges are quite interested, the academics, and I sat in a meeting when I did a debrief on the IT review we did for our College of Management and Economics uh, with a number of individuals, and some of those were faculty members who were really quite incensed that there would be this idea. And my response was, you know, we can do this in, in pieces. We don't have to blanket the full college with this approach. We can take it to the administrative if they're interested, and they were. Um, and it's OK if the faculty don't want to have their computers to be part of that particular service. So we don't really see it as, as trying to push. We're trying to push what's available on campus and what's being paid for by the campus. And um, I really try to bring that speak of you know campus, not central IT, when we come in and have those discussions so that we're getting away from that yours, mine uh, dialogue that tends to happen because we're all focusing it around a budget. Um, the budget's coming out of the same place. And we are being somewhat assisted right now because we are going through a large priority prioritization process, so our program prioritization process, sorry, otherwise known as the PPP, where we've all had to explain what we're doing with our money. Um, and that's all gone into a central uh, discussion area. Our task force is going to be assessing that and then determining um, what we'll do with that or some recommendations coming out of that for spend. So we don't know that we're going to get quite the visibility on the IT spend that we were hoping for as part of that process. But I think it is just it's getting pushed up because deans in their areas are also recognizing they have a finite budget. So in a way, this is an advantage for them to look for ways that they can do IT or deliver IT differently that may be more uh, advantageous for them. So just to make sure I understand the question, so are you asking if the, the projects that we initiate ourselves that will have an impact on campus, are we? Sure. It's a really good question, and this is sort of a year out. So um, there's been projects that have been ongoing and started prior to. I think the Office of Research is a really good example um, of, of an external project, essentially, that has very much become uh, in step with the BA process. We have a number of other large systems um, on campus, and um, um, we have an event registration system, ActiveNet, actually, is being implemented on our campus. And they uh, that's been going on for about three years now. But uh, more recently, we became more involved with that and, and helped to discuss um, what the value would be for other areas on campus. They started as a grassroots discussion and there were a number of units on campus interested in this system. We came on board because it is going to have to integrate, it is going to have to um, have some um, uh, tie back to central IT. And um, so we had those discussions with one of the, the, with the, the group of stakeholders there, probably not in the same sort of formal way that um, we're outlining it in our IT review process. But yes, we are starting to have those. And one of the things that's coming out of that is just this understanding that when you have these systems that are going to be delivered to a variety of areas on campus, you need governance around that. So we're starting to talk about trustee models and how people can um, work together to ensure that they continue to move forward with these systems in a much more um, I guess a much more shared approach versus one big user or big um, stakeholder who sort of pushes their way along. So we're trying to get people to talk a little bit more across departments, not just with central IT. So hopefully that answered your question on some level. Any other questions? Yeah. What kind of 
the proper legwork that we do to guide people before we go out and start building a business for them. Or we're <laughs> going through a couple of degrees or something right now and they come back and talk to people, it's like, yeah. Yeah. What do you do at the, the, the preamble for that? It's a great question. Um, we do let them know that we're embarking upon I2 reviews. The one, that, the one area, well, there's two areas that really flash out as um, probably key recommendations that come out of almost every I2 review we do with a broader group. And one is managed desktops as an opportunity to move away from having um, their dedicated IT staff focused on, on those commodity services. And the other one is around our servers, so moving servers out of those distributed areas and into our data center. So we do have discussions at the management team level to say, hey, we're now embarking upon and, you know, so that we keep them in the loop. When it comes down to the recommendations, we try to give a timeline. So how long would this take? So if we're recommending managed desktops, what would be the time lapse from now to when you could actually implement that? And we try to make sure that we're not short selling that too much because it's a, you know, there's a huge discussion that has to happen with that. Um, we, we're hoping that we're working hand in hand internally so that we know that we'll have the resources to take on a large number of new desktops. So that's an area we're focusing on just with the managed desktops because it is an area that's pretty easy to sell, frankly. Um, they're looking at developing it as, uh, it started off as a pretty grassroots type service as well, but we're really gearing that now to an enterprise perspective, so really talking about enterprise managed desktops versus just managed desktops, which was just, oh, let's just keep taking on a few more desktops one at a time. So we just try to, we do absolutely recognize that we could be um, the victims of our own success, and so we're trying to make sure that we're staying aware of where those challenges are, and we have to be realistic in those reviews. Some people really want to move quickly uh, coming out of the review, and we have to remind them there's still a whole project. This is not an implementation. We need to actually move back now and start the impl implementation project and ensure that there's appropriate timelines and um, that the requirements are clearly defined for that actual project. Because this the review really is a pretty high-level overview of various recommendations, not just one specific area. Mm -hmm. And it's an education on the starting point for mm -hmm. The next projects and, and often some of the strengths are the education part that uh, we've come out to talk to the faculty here's what's available they don't know some of these things or they hadn't heard about it before so uh, or education on the what would be the next steps as opposed to an informal discussion and trying to figure out what the next steps would be sure. Yeah, we we have um, our project methodology is very close to the industry standard, like the PMI, kind of uh, the same way that our business analysis methodology follows, like what's being done uh, through International Institute of Business Analysis. It's an organization in Toronto, so um, yes, both of them are be very common to what you.